Tonight we continue to look at the NCAA women's basketball tournament and the changes implemented this year for the first time. Following the report produced by the law firm of Kaplan, Hecker and Fink last year, the NCAA was able to make a series of changes that were immediately implemented at this year's tournament. Valley News Live Sports Director Beth Hool was at the Final Four this weekend in Minneapolis and has more on the changes still to come. There are still several important factors the NCAA and their conference members are working to address following the Kaplan report. And for those involved in the women's game, they are arguably some of the most important that remain, including how the women's tournament can generate its own financial stability to ensure its future growth. <laughs> The conversation of equality in athletics always seems to come back to money. Money made, money spent, money lost. According to the Kaplan report, the structure the NCAA had in place created a losing game for the women's tournament. The Kaplan report was extremely exhaustively um, researched and they put together some really terrific material and not all of which we were happy to read because it was hard. Some of it was just hard stuff to read and their critique was severe in a lot of ways, and, but, but that doesn't mean it was wrong. The Kaplan report found that the NCAA spent $53.2 million on the 2019 men's tournament, compared to $17.9 million on the women's. The report explained the many disparities, quote, limited the growth of women's basketball, and that the lack of investment, quote, perpetuated a mistaken narrative that women's basketball is destined to be a money loser year after year. Uh, we certainly still know that we've got a ways to go. This is not a finished task or anything remotely close to it, but uh, in the time that was available and the resources that we're able to put in, uh, I think you'll all be able to see and recognize that there's a, a fair amount of changes that have occurred. The factor coaches at the women's final four seem to agree is the biggest financial hurdle is the distribution scheme currently in place, which financially rewards men's schools and conferences for success in the NCAA tournament. It doesn't have to be the same. It just, we just need to be treated correctly. So as long as they're given the same experiences, that's what we're fighting for. Now, as they've discussed, it would be great to see shares of, re of revenue given out as you move on in the NCAA tournament for the, for the women as well. And it might not be the same amount as the men. See, I'm, I've never been a big proponent of everything has to be the same. The NCAA's revenue distribution scheme awarded $168.5 million in 2019 based on their performance in the men's basketball tournament and $0 for success in the women's tournament. And according to the Kaplan report, that creates an incentive for schools and conferences to prioritize the men's programs. I do believe that we should incorporate a unit structure uh, over the next um, maybe 10 years where, um, you know, Having, having there be a financial reward for the teams being successful. And I think that that would help uh, the resources uh, on each campus. But that decision to add revenue distribution lies with the conferences. So there is a, there's a group working on it right now. It's, it's part, that's part of this being a great moment to have this transformation committee working and the new constitution, because I do believe that it's really important that they look at it, that they, that they look at how can we get the resources that we need in this championship and other women's championships overall, by the way. The hurdle in getting the women's programs that compensation is the question of where the money comes from. One possibility is it being taken from the same pool as the men's funds. But the Kaplan report also suggested the next TV contract, which will begin in 2024, could be renegotiated to create a new pool of money where a women's basketball performance fund could grow on its own. For so long, it feels like we've acted like when it comes to women's sports, it's sort of like rocket science, you know, like, well, how do we grow viewership? Very easy, right? You grow viewership by more robust, co robust coverage. You grow viewership by making people fall in love with these players, by talking about storylines, and by giving them a platform. The NCAA has sold out eight of the last nine women's championships, and the Kaplan Report recognized an already growing viewership for women's basketball, with this year's numbers proving their projection right. ESPN reported this year's title game was the most watched season finale in nearly two decades, up 18% from last year's title game 
and 30% from 2019s. If you build it, they will come. If you make people interested in the game, then they will come and watch. And it has not hurt that we have had fantastic competition. <laughs> While money is a major factor in the final few gaps the Kaplan report highlighted, some of the women's game's most successful and experienced coaches have still more suggestions that they feel have an even greater impact on the athlete and the product. Like there's things that don't, that don't involve money. The teams that played Monday night in the NCAA tournament, we got home at 2 a.m. Tuesday morning. And we left Tuesday to come out here. And we practice Wednesday, Thursday for the biggest game of the year. The guys finish Sunday and they have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and they play Saturday. I don't see that in the report. So all the things that people talk about, that does nothing to make your team better. The swag bag and the weight room and all that other crap that we talked about last year, that doesn't help these kids get ready for Friday night's game. An extra three days would help. So we should be talking about that stuff. And one of the final pieces that the Kaplan report suggested was combining both the men's and the win women's tournament to take place at the same location at the same time. All the coaches and players I talked to at the final four said they don't necessarily agree with that one. They believe the women's tournament has proven uh, time and time again that it can stand on its own. They can continue to grow it though. Yes. That's a good thing. Yes. All right. Thanks.